Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to start with ratios and use what you know about ratios to discuss proportions and different types of means. So first of all, let's define a ratio. A ratio is a quotient of two numbers. So for example, you have three to five written as a fraction in words, it's a division, or maybe simplified to a decimal format. These are really all the same thing. And you want to realize that fractions and ratios are interchangeable. It's really important. Now there are many ways to think of ratios. You might have first learned as a ratio, like three to five as maybe part to part, like you're in a sport and you have three wins and five losses. Well, that's part to part, right? And in that case, there might have been eight games. But ratios can also be part to whole, just like fractions can be either one, and they're really interchangeable. Now, geometrically, you can think of ratio as slope. For example, here's a line. The steepness of the line, or the slope in this case, is 1, 2, 3, 4 on the rise, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the run. So it has a ratio, or a slope, of 4 to 5. Of course, this can be scaled in different ways without changing that slope at all. So for example, in this case, we're looking at two different points on the line. Now this is the same exact line, I've just zoomed out a little bit. And in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 10 across. And as you know, 4 to 5 and 8 to 10 are the same ratio. So we can visualize ratio in terms of slope. But there are many other ways to think about it. And another convenient way is the proportion. The fact that all the ratios um, and a chain or an equation are equivalent, uh, that's represented by a proportion. So for example, let's say we had something else like 6 to 10. Clearly that's different from three to five. Those are not exactly the same, but numerically they're equivalent. And that's what a proportion is telling us. It can also be written, of course, as ratios. So a proportion is just a relationship between two equivalent ratios. Now there are many things we can look at in proportions. We're gonna focus on this theorem right here, that the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So in this case, you might notice between these two equal fractions, for example, 6 times 5, right, this cross product right here, that's 30, and then 3 times 10 is also 30. Well, this theorem is basically saying that that always happens. And in this case, um, you've got 6 and 5, that product, that's the extremes. So you want to label that this is an extreme and that's an extreme. And then 3 and 10 are the means. Now, why are they named that way? Well, look over here to the ratios. The inner terms, 10 and 3, those are the means or middle, and the 6 and the 5 are the outer terms, those are the extremes, right? So over here we have our two values, 6 and 5, which are the extremes, and 10 and 3, which are the means. And the theorem is just saying the product of the means or middle values, as you can see in the ratio there in the middle, equals the product of the extremes or the outside values here. This is always true. And again, I like to say, like, look at it in terms of ratios and you'll see what they're talking about. Why does this make sense? Well, maybe another way to look at this is through what you know about balancing equations. Um, so in this case, we know 6 over 10 and 3 over 5 are the same, right? They're already, we're told that they're equal. Well, you might know properties of equality. For example, I can multiply this side by 10 and this side by 10. I can multiply both sides of my equation by 10, and that accomplishes this product here of the means, 3 times 10, right? Because over on the right here, I'm going to do 3 times 10. I just got to balance it on both sides. But I've also got to multiply 5 by 6. How can I do that? Well, on the left-hand side of my equation, I can multiply by 5. Eventually, I'll have 5 times 6. But if I do that on the left-hand side, I've got to also do it on the right-hand side to balance it out. So now I have a totally balanced equation. And if I rearrange this mess, First, take 6 tenths and split it. That's 6 times a tenth, right? That's 6 tenths. And 3 fifths is 3 times 1 fifth. The reason I set it up this way is I can see that, oh yeah, this is always going to be equal. And if we look at this real quick, we can see why. So on the left-hand side, I have a 10 times a tenth. Well, 10 one-tenths is 1. And then what's left over is 5 times 6 or 30. On the right-hand side, I have 5 times a fifth. Well, what's five times a fifth? What's five one fifth? That's one. And then what's left over is three times 10, which is also 30. So I have 30 on both sides. And this just helps me understand, oh yeah, maybe this is always true. And I can show it much more clearly with algebra. 
So I want to show that B times C equals A times D. So here it is. I've got my setup here. A to B equals C to D. Let's first multiply everything by B on both sides. That will enable me to multiply my two middle values, right? B times C, and then I have to balance out my equation with another B over here. And then I have to multiply both sides by um, D in this case. I'll try to mirror the previous problem. All right, the extreme D times A, I have to accomplish that. So I've got a D over here. If I want to multiply this A by a D, I've got to also do it on the left-hand side. So now this is kind of a mess. I'm going to kind of split it up like I did before. A over B is A times 1 over B. C over D, that's just C times 1 over D. Same thing. And then I just rewrote D and B over here and B and D over there. Why is this helpful? Because just like before, I have B times 1 over B. That's 1, right? The B's cancel to 1. And what's left over is A times D. On the other side, I have D times 1 over D. That's also 1. And what's left over is C times B. And there's my statement. What am I showing here? A times D, that's the product of the extremes, right? A and D equals B times C or C times B, the product of the means over here. So the means, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And just to kind of summarize that, if you have a ratio A to B equals C to D, we're saying that A times D equals B times C right here. If you see in a proportion, A times D, this cross product, equals B times C, this cross product there. And what's also really cool is that you can kind of arrange them in any way you want. So if you have AD over BC, you can, through division, rearrange them into any order. Um, you can rearrange it so that any of the terms are either means or extremes. Like over here, you can see I've got A and D as the means and C and B as the extremes, which is the opposite of what I have here. And I can get there really quickly. What did I do to get there? Well, I had B times C right over here, and then I have A and D. So I want to get C over A here. How do I do that? Just divide both sides by A, and then divide both sides by B, and I can get this arrangement. So there are different ways to arrange them. You're not like set. It doesn't have to be a certain number as a mean or extreme. Now, speaking of means and proportions, we should also start to talk about geometric means. And there are other means out there beyond arithmetic and geometric. And yes, there is a geometry to this. We'll get to it. But we want to first talk about it in terms of the algebra. So for example, when the means are equivalent, that's a geometric mean. So for example, 1 and 4 and 4 and 16, these are equal ratios, right? What's the geometric mean of this? Well, it's the 4s here. So this is saying that the geometric mean of 1 and 16 is 4. 4 is that middle number, okay? Now, you might also notice, that's interesting because 4 is the square root of 16, and that's exactly what's happening here. If you have two numbers, and those numbers are 1 and 16, and I said, what's the geometric mean? You could figure out very quickly by doing 1 times 16, and then taking the square root of that number. It's the square root here because there are two factors. And you could also say that negative 4 would work in this case. That's also a geometric mean, just not in this given example. So 4 or negative 4 are both the square roots of 16, they both work as geometric means. Now what if, try to imagine for a second if you had four numbers here you're multiplying. Try to imagine how this equation might change. So we want to extend this. Um, if you had four numbers, let's say, I said what's the geometric mean of 1, 2, 3, and 4? Well, it would be this four numbers here, and 2 times 3 times 4 times 1 is 24. So it's the fourth root of 24, which is about 2.2. Now, we'll talk more about what this means and how to set it up, but this is just a kind of formulaic way of thinking about it. And you want to be careful. This is different from the arithmetic mean. Typically, I, I think when you learn about mean or first learn about mean, you add up the numbers and then divide by n. So for example, if I said, what's the arithmetic mean of 1, 2, 3, and 4? 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10. And it's four numbers, right? So you take 10, divide it by 4, that's 2.5. Notice that these means are different. And as we learn more about averages and means, we'll, we'll learn how to decide which one makes sense because they're really telling us very different ideas. To generalize it, though, uh, you can say that you're multiplying n factors. So the first one, second one, all the way to n. To find the geometric mean, you just take the nth root of that product, right? The arithmetic mean, you're, you're adding x terms. 
So instead of multiplying, you're now adding. And then instead of taking the root, you're dividing by that many factors. So it's kind of an elevation in operations here. So you have addition of, of, of terms, and you're dividing them by n. Here you have multiplication of that term. And instead of dividing, you're going to the next level up, essentially, and taking the root of those terms. All right, so let's try some examples. The first one, we're solving for x. The second one here says find the fourth term or fourth proportional um, if the first three terms are uh, 2, 3, and 4. I should have said, I don't think I mentioned it, in any proportion, this is the first, second, third, and fourth term. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Next question, find the mean proportional and then find the ratio of x to y. So why don't you pause the video and try these out and then we'll go through each of them. Okay, so let's deal with example one. So first of all, in this kind of a problem right here, we're using the fact that the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. So three times 14 or uh, 42 equals seven x, right? So x is six, you divide both sides by seven. I want to point out that you can swap around the means if it's convenient right here. So 3 over 7 is equal to x over 14. And this might, it might help you. Um, you do, you're going to multiply 3 by 14 and divide that by 7, and you also get 6. So I'm just kind of rearranging it. And um, in this case, you could do 7 times x, but there would be no point, sorry. That would add an extra step to your work. If you brought the 7 over here, you can have to divide it back over. So be aware, you don't always have to multiply both cross products. So again, by cross product, I'm just referring to either the product of the extremes or the means in, in any order. Okay, find the fourth term, um, or fourth proportional, if the first three times, oh, I should say terms, sorry about that, that should say terms, are two, three, and four. Okay, so the terms of times are two, three, and four, uh, find the fourth one. So again, the product of these two numbers, 2 and x, those are our extremes, equals the product of our means right here. So 2x equals 12 and x is 6. That's all there is to it. The third example says find the mean proportional. That's the geometric mean between 4 and 16. Well, that's the square root of 64 because 4 times 16 is 64. So it's either positive or negative 8. Okay, in example 4, it says if 3x equals 4 way, 4y, find the ratio of x to y. So, all right, so we can do that. So we got this equation right here. And if I want to know x to y, I want to have x divided by y. So divide both sides by y. I got this. But I, I don't want to know the ratio of 3x to y. I want to know x to y. So divide both sides by 3, and I'm finished. x to y is the same as 4 to 3. But again, you can skip over this intermediate step because you know the product of the extremes has to equal the product of the means, and that's exactly what this is saying. All right, let's try two more examples. So here's the fifth example. Why don't you pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, if we want to compare these two, right, well, let's just start to analyze what these proportions are saying. In the first one, I know x times b and a times y have to be the same. So in this second proportion, if it's equivalent, I know b times x minus 2y, my extremes, has to equal y times a minus 2b, the means right here. So this also has to be true. And if I distribute the b, I get b times x, and then b times 2y. Over here, I get y times a and y times 2b. I get this um, equation right here. But notice that we have minus 2yb on both sides, and they, so if we add them, if we add 2yb to both sides, they cancel out, and what we're left with is the exact same proportion we started with, the first one. So yes, they are saying the same thing. Try example six. Pause the video, give it a shot, and then we'll solve it together. Notice the similarity in this problem, but also it's really cool. Um, if we can show that these two proportions are the same thing, notice that we're adding b, which is uh, the denominator of the first fraction, and then we're adding d, the denominator of the second fraction, and we're trying to figure out, does that get us the same exact uh, proportional statement? Are they equivalent in the sense that they're all, uh, they're, they're showing the same equivalence of the same things, right? So let's, let's, let's show that. In the first one, right, we have AD equals BC. In the second one, we have D times A plus B and B times C plus D. 
So we're going to distribute the D. We get AD and BD over here, BC and BD. And look at that. If we subtract those two B term, BD terms right there, we're left with AD equals BC. So these are actually equivalents. You can mess around with the proportions in all sorts of ways to get equivalent statements. All right, well, I hope this helped. And for much of what we're doing here, this is just a start. Um, thanks for joining me.